Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts, opinions, and feels on Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. This is the third and final book in the Infernal Devices trilogy, TID. The first book being Clockwork Angel and the second book being Clockwork Prince. I do have full video book reviews and discussions on these books, so if you want to click right here, it'll take you to the Clockwork Angel review, and if you want to click here, it'll take you to the Clockwork Prince review. I can't even begin to express how satisfied I was with this final installment within this trilogy. Cassandra Clare tied this trilogy together in such a heartbreaking and beautiful way. It was incredible seeing this complicated storyline all come together. There's lots of twists and turns along the way, and things you just literally do not see coming at all. You can try to predict what's going to happen in this book, but you're probably going to be wrong. I know that I thought I knew where the story was going, but apparently I had no idea, because it went in a direction that I did not see coming at all. Overall, it was one of the best finales that I have ever read. It was magnificent. If you have not read the Infernal Devices trilogy, I would totally go for it. It's such a fantastic trilogy and I highly recommend it. I'm kind of bummed that it took me this long to get to it, but at the same time, I'm kind of sad that this trilogy is over. That's all I can really say about this book without spoiling it. Obviously, this is the finale, so I can't say too much without revealing something. So if you have not read Clockwork Princess or if you have not read this full trilogy, you should go now because I'm going to be jumping into a spoilery section and I do not want you to be spoiled for this book because it's fantastic. If you have read this book, stick along with me and let's discuss. Clockwork Princess. So we start off this book with the scene with Adele Starkweather and she's at her Shadow Hunter marking ceremony and it's a horrendous scene and we really have no clue what's going on because at this point we don't realize that Adele is not really Adele. Adele was switched with a mundane child so Tessa is really Adele. So Mr. Benedict Lightwood has been turned into this worm-like creature due to the demon pox and our squad of Shadow Hunters gotta take him out. I was dying at the scene we have between Will, Tessa, and Jem. You don't think I can fight? Tessa said, drawing back and matching his silvery gaze with her own, because I'm a girl. I don't think you can fight because you're wearing a wedding dress, said Jen. For what it's worth, I don't think Will could fight in that dress either. Perhaps not, said Will, who had ears like a bat's, but I would make a radiant bride. I could not stop picturing Will in a wedding dress throughout that whole scene after that little conversation. I kept kind of getting frustrated with Will at the beginning of this book and his attitude toward his sister. I know that he wants to protect her and that he doesn't want anything to happen to her, but he just acted like he didn't believe in her and it just came off as really demeaning. It's like he just didn't believe in her ability to fight and he just kept interfering with her and it was just so aggravating, like chill, Will. Ch -ch 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 chill Will. I was so nervous that Henry was gonna die in this scene. I was actually pretty nervous throughout the whole book that Henry was gonna die at some point. I just thought he might die because he is kind of an easier target. I lost it so hard at this little conversation between Tessa and Henry. And clawed you, Tessa said in concern. You're bleeding. No, I did that myself. Fell on my dagger, Henry said sheepishly, drawing his tea from his belt. Don't tell Charlotte. Leave it to Henry to stab himself during a fight. Later on, after the little battle with Lightwood, Worm, Wormwood, Light, Wormwood, we have the scene between Will and Tessa and they're discussing books and Tessa says when you're reading a book and you know that it's going to be a tragedy you can feel the cold and darkness coming see the net drawing close around the characters who live and breathe on the pages but you're tied to the story as if being dragged behind a carriage and you cannot let go or turn the course aside I see you Cassandra Clare I see you in your foreshadowing as much as I love Jim there were points throughout this book that I just couldn't help but be frustrated with him he did some pretty selfish things and it was really upsetting you could just tell that Jim was done with being sick and being addicted to the drugs he had given up hope on finding a cure. And I don't really blame him. I mean, it's obviously really hard what he's going through. But him losing hope was affecting everybody around him. We have this great scene between Gideon and Sophie when Sophie finds out that Gideon had been hoarding all these scones that he'd been ordering from her. And Sophie's all, by the angel, you are not wasting my time making me work hard on these scones and you're not even eating them. And Gideon's all, yeah, I don't even really like scones. I just wanted to see you. I thought it was so sweet, though, that he was ordering them in order to be able to see Sophie. Cassandra Clare made it so freaking easy to despise Council Wayland. Oh my gosh. Every time I read about him, I was just like, get away! Leave! Nobody wants you here, Council Wayland. And I thought that at some point it was going to be revealed that like, oh, he's working with Mortmain and that's why he's like after Charlotte. But like, no. He wasn't even working with Mortmain. Like, he just wanted Charlotte fired. And it was so annoying that he was trying to convince Gabriel and Gideon to spy on her. It made me so happy that they didn't go along with it. And they just sent him these stupid observations in order to 
the show to him that they were spying on her. So we find out that Mortmean wants to trade Tessa for some Yen Fen. And Tessa is more than willing to go, but of course Jim is like, oh no, you do not. I was livid when he threw that little bit of Yen Fen that they had received in the fire. What are you doing, Jim? And Will dives into the fire, tries to save it, and just burns his hands, like just, ugh. Jim, you're not thinking. I think one of the most beautiful scenes in this book is when Jim reveals to Tessa that he's written this song for her, and he plays it for her. It was just such a romantic scene, and it just gave me all the feelings. That scene for me just made up for all of Jim's stupidity. And they decide to speed up their wedding date, even though that doesn't end up happening. So Jessamine returns, but she ends up dying basically right on the spot. I was kind of saddened by Jessamine's death, even though I wasn't a huge fan of her character throughout this trilogy. She was annoying and made a lot of stupid decisions, but I would still hoped that she would come around and do something good. And in a sense, she did, because she does give us a very vital clue as to where Mortmain is. So Tessa gets captured by the automatons. Dun, dun, dun! And Cecily figures out where Mortmain is and where he's taken Tessa. Will definitely underestimated Cecily. She's a smart little cookie. I loved that scene when Gabriel spills some truth tea on Council Wayland, telling him how he's the one that wants Charlotte gone and he's trying to get all these people to do all his dirty work. But of course, Council Wayland, being the manipulative person that he is, gets Gabriel to go along with his stupid plan. I love seeing the relationship between Magnus and Will in this book. Will treats him like a human and I think that's all that Magnus wants, to be treated as an equal. I just love Magnus in general, to be honest. I love that he promises Will that he won't leave Jim's side. Oh man. Oh man, when Jim reveals that he overheard Magnus and Will discussing how Will was in love with Tessa, I was just like, it's about to go down, suck us. The secret's finally out. How is he going to react? And voila, the good person that Jim is, he's like, if I would have known, I would have called off the wedding. I would have ended things so you could have been with Tessa. Gotta love that old Jim. This whole scene was emotional because at this point, we just think that Jim's gonna die. Like, this is it. This is Jim and Will's, like, final goodbye. And in that moment, it just breaks you because the scene is just so heartbreaking. We have this line that just gutted me. I was just like, oh my gosh, the feelings. Wherever we are, we are as one. Just... I'm dead. R.I.P. me. Going back to Magnus, I loved how encouraging he was of Henry and his invention and how he just supported him and encouraged him to keep going at it. And he was like genuinely curious about Henry's inventions and I just love that. Just another thing that I love about Magnus, it was nice finally seeing somebody believe in Henry. It was so crazy learning about how Henry was the one responsible for portals. Finally one of his inventions works. And it's one that's used loads in the modern day Shadowhunter world. We have this moment where Jim tells Charlotte to stop looking for a cure, to tell everybody just to stop searching and at this point I'm just like Jim's gonna die he's gonna die he's gonna be dead and we have the scene where Will feels his parabatai rune start to bleed and there's this line this freaking line and it's just Jim was dead and then Cassandra Clare just switches perspectives and goes to Tess and I'm just like, you can't drop a line like that and not continue on with you. It's so sad when the realization of everything kind of sets in with Will. Jim was all he had in life for a long time and now he's just gone. I love that scene when Gabriel just like breaks through to Charlotte and lets her know that she can't rely on Council Wayland. She's just gotta take things into her own hands and go with it. And telling her how clear it is that Council Wayland just wants her out of the Institute. So Mortmain has built up this army of automatons and they are are able to take down shadow hunters. Tessa and Will are reunited and have some sexy sexy times and I literally lost it in laughter when Magnus like wakes them up. Well, said a very amused voice, this is unexpected. You might want to get up, he said. Everyone will be here quite soon to rescue you and you may prefer to have clothes on when they arrive, he shrugged. I would at any rate, but then I am well known to be remarkably shy. Just such a good scene, such a hilarious scene. So freaking Council Waylon gets what he had coming. <laughs> Maybe I should have felt bad for Council Whalen, but like I just didn't. I didn't feel anything for him at that point. Does that make me a horrible human being? I don't know, but I just, I didn't feel bad for him. Again, we have this moment where I'm fearing for Henry's life because he's attacked by one of the automatons. Thankfully, he survives, but he's not going to be able to walk, which is really sad. So we've gone through the motions of Jem's death. We think he's gone. We think he's dead. But no, no, Jem is not dead. I was unbelievably shocked when we find out that Jem has turned into a silent brother. It just, what? <laughs> what? My heart was so full. My heart was so happy. I couldn't believe it. We have this epic scene where Tessa reaches through to the angel and her necklace and the divine fire of the angel was blazing through her. And basically all she had to do was reach out her hands to the 
the automatons and the Mortmain and they just crumble. Such an awesome scene. Then we have this scene between Tessa and Jim and it breaks my heart. My heart broke a lot throughout this book. It was just constantly breaking and then it would just like kind of heal and then it would break again and break and break and break and break. And now I have no heart at all. Thanks a lot, Cassandra Clare. And then my heart became whole again when they decided to meet at the bridge every year for just one hour. <sighs> We see Jessamine as a ghost, which was really interesting. And she gives Will some sensible advice about Tessa, which was surprising. It's like death changed her or something. Then we've got the epilogue. Oh man, the epilogue, the epilogue, the epilogue. We learned that Will had passed away, which is obviously really sad. And then my mind was literally blown. Like, I just, I can't believe the one thing that I just never ever expected to happen. Jem, Jem, Jem. Jem is no longer a silent brother. They have found a cure. I just, I literally can't. They reference the kids from the Mortal Instruments series, so that's gonna tie into this ending and I just, I can't even believe it. I never in a million years would have been able to predict this ending. It just came out of nowhere, shocked me completely, but it was so good, so freaking good. Just so happy with how this trilogy came to a close. So those are all my thoughts, opinions, and feels on Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. You guys should let me know down below what you thought of this book, because I'd love to know what was your favorite moment, what moment broke you the most. Let me know down below. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so click subscribe if you want to be notified for when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye, chew! What, what was I going to say? I don't remember. And things you just literally see... What am I trying to say? I loved that scene when Gabriel spilled some truth tree. Tooth tree. Tooth tree. But of course, Council Wayland being the manipulative person. Manipulative.